كويس للاردن تخصص المجال بصريات طبيه وطبعا انضمت عندنا فيجن ميديكا للبرنامج التدريبي المتعلق بالتعويضات العينيه صنع تثبيت العيون الاصطناعيه وخلصت البرنامج بنجاح وما شاء الله رجعت على الاردن وعم تشتغل بهذا المجال بشكل كثير كويس واللقاء العلم الخامس المتخصصين بمجال التعويضات العينيه في لها مشاركه فلتفضل مشكورا. ثانك يو. Hello, my name is Hannah Awais. I'm from Jordan. I, I work at Eye Speciality Hospital. Uh, I'm in charge in the retinal imaging department. Also, I established the prosthetic eye section at the hospital. I want to thank Mr. Hussein Al-Maluhi and Madam Angie Taha for <laughs> teaching me the prosthetic eye making and setting. Uh, and I'm so glad and honored to be here today to talk about fundus imaging uh, uh, modalities and the role of each imaging technique. Uh, as you know, as you know, the fundus of the eye, it's composed of the back surface of the eye, it's composed of the optic disc, fovea, blood vessels, and the macula. Um, with fundus photography, a special camera can detect the, the back surface of the eye through the pupil and takes pictures. As you can see here, the, the macula behind the optical zone. Fundus imaging is defined as a process whereby reflected light is used to form a two-dimensional two representation of the three-dimensional retina. The, semi, it's, the retina is a semi-transparent layer composed of 10 layers, as you, if you remember. Uh, our imaging department in Eye Speciality Hospital is an integral part uh, of the diagnostic procedure to evaluate retinal conditions and follow of uh, re uh, responses to the treatment. Also, um, here is some of the technologies we offer in the uh, imaging department. Fundus autofluorescence, as it knows FAF, it's an imaging technique that uh, used to record fluorescence may occur naturally in the eye. The uh, lipofusin and the melanin uh, pigments that are uh, um, uh, concentrated in the uh, RPE layer. Uh, the techniques allow the topographic mapping of lipofusin distribution in the uh, RPE. This is a case of AMD, age-related macular degeneration. Uh, as you can see here, the black dots are the uh, uh, are atrophies in the macula, and the white dots are the hyper hyperfluorescence because of the drusens. And the other image, the orange one, is the fundus uh, image. Optical coherence tomography (OCT). We all know OCT. It's a non-invasive imaging technique that captures a cross-sectional uh, view, allowing us to visualize the individual retina uh, layers of the retina. Uh, the types of the images does not expose the patient to any radiation. It's a uh, near-infrared light. Um, uh, it, uh, it looks you can it can differentiate the layer inside the eye. Uh, seeing the retina from this cross-sectional viewpoint provides us with a detect to, to detect, diagnose, and treat retinal diseases um, for each layer. This is the layers of the retina. It, it's at 10 layers, despite the choroid, starting from the RPE to the uh, inner limiting membrane. OCT can be used to probe structures of the retina, like AMD, age-related macular regeneration, diabetic retinopathy, uh, glaucoma monitoring, and macular hole, vitreous attractions, um, retinal detachments, overall uh, the health of the macula. Now I'm going to talk about uh, age-related macular regeneration, uh, dry AMD and wet AMD. The dry AMD, uh, as you can see here in the first photo, it's just a scar going on over the retina under the uh, in the choroid layer. The AMD it's with the new vascularization under the retina that causes uh, edema, uh, subretinal fluid, subretinal hemorrhages. Amsler grid uh, can help in diagnose early AMD and any changes in the retina. We all should use this test in our clinics to uh, detect these uh, changes, especially in elderly people. Diabetic macular edema, as you can see here, this is accumulation of a fluid in the plexiform layer of the retina. In diabetic macular retinopathy, uh, we can see signs of uh, deposits on the macula, uh, uh, lipid um, uh, accumulations, and uh, new vascularization all over the retina. As well as we can uh, detect some uh, new vascularizations over the disc uh, as NVDs and uh, new vascularizations elsewhere as in, and anywhere uh, over in the retina. 
Um, this is an edema associated with retinal vein occlusion. This is a patient had a stroke in their left eye and causes a dot blood hemorrhages all over and exudates in the retinas. This is a case of retinal detachment, as you can see here. A case reveals the separation of the entire neurosensory retina uh, from the RPE uh, temporal to the fovea. This is the right eye. We can know if it's the right eye or the left eye, depending on the uh, RNFL layer. This is the white thickening um, on, the left, on the right of the image. <laughs> the first layer up. This is the... Uh, the black area is of the vitreous, and the, this is the retina, and this is the choroid uh, uh, underneath the retina. This is a macular hole, a full thickness macular hole, stage four of macular hole. And uh, also we can use OCT in anterior segment, as you know, in contact lens fitting, and uh, we, to detect uh, any changes in the uh, angle meshwork. So um, some people may have open angle glaucoma and closed angle glaucoma. So we can detect the um, degree of the angle and the uh, um, closing of it. OCT imaging can also be crucial in diagnosing uh, and following glaucoma with scans uh, des designed to calculate changes of the optic nerve surrounding the nerve fiber layer. Uh, another modality is the OCT angio. Uh, this is a new technique. It, uh, it is procedure to use uh, to view circulation and uh, abnormal blood vessels in the retina. As you can see here, this is uh, four photos. This is anterior uh, uh, angiography of the sup uh, superior superficial retina and the deep layer, as well as the outer retina as the cor uh, chorea capillaris to detect where the changes in the vessels are going from. OCTA is commonly used. Sorry. <laughs> commonly used in, uh, for diabetic retinopathy to detect the microaneurysms in the retina. Uh, this is another uh, way to detect the, uh, to differentiate AMD width from dry as the OCTA. It shows a new vascularization deep in the macula. Another modality is a fluorescent angiography, which uses a bright yellow contrast dye uh, that shows the circulation of the retinal vessels. It's a live imaging uh, technique. Uh, the dye is injected in the arm, and the rapid sequence of pictures are taken through the test to detect any leakage or any blockage in the retina, in the vessels, and which vessels are need to, to have a treatment, such as lasers or uh, and so on. Fluorescent angiography, this is the faces of the fluorescein. Uh, picture A, it shows uh, the uh, choroidal flush the, before the retina arrives to the arteries. And B is the arterial face and the chorea, uh, art, uh, lamellar face is the third photo. And D is the uh, venous face and the, uh, the C E layer, E picture is for overall retina. And uh, the F picture is for the late face when the dye starts to leak out. Uh, Cinder serous retinopathy, as you can see here, it's a CR, uh, CR uh, case. Uh, as you can see here in fluorescein, it shows a smokestack uh, presentation. Diabetic retinopathy, this is a proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Uh, it's called proliferative because there is a new vascularizations coming, uh, multiplying in each area. So this is the ones over the, the disc, this is the new vascularization over the disc, NVEs, NVDs, and the elsewhere is the NVDs. As you see, the, the white dots are the microenzymes and exudates. Uh, another thing I would like to point out too, it's a serious case presented to our hospital. A burn in the macula caused by laser hair removal. Nowadays, uh, laser is um, um, used more often. So uh, this patient did not wear eye goggles and uh, did not take the right percussions. This is a case presentation. It's an 18 year old patient, female patient, presented to our hospital with drop vision in left uh, eye. Uh, she had six over 120 in left eye. Medically free with history of hair laser uh, removal a week before. Uh, OCT was ordered as it showed that left subretinal fluids intraretinal hemorrhages uh, size. This is the picture of the right eye. This is the, the picture in the left eye where the laser hit the eye. As you can see, there is a separation and fluids accumulating under the retina. Proper medical intervention was done uh, as she had three doses of anti injections. Uh, uh, visual acuity on the last visit was 0 0.4, 6 over 14, 15, sorry. A subretinal fluid has resolved, but a scar in the parafoveal area was remained. This is the OCT after the uh, treatment. 
but uh, another uh, section of the, the image, as you can see here, this is a scar left in, uh, in the left eye, para, para central fovea. Another modality in imaging uh, the posterior pole is the B-scan ultrasonography. It is most useful uh, when direct visualization of the intraocular structures are difficult or impossible to be viewed. Situations that prevent normal examination, such, uh, such as uh, high FEMA, high popion, dense cataract, vitreous opacities, hemorrhage, inflammatory, and uh, persistent pupil membrane. In such cases, uh, diagnostic B-scan ultrasound can actually uh, image intraocular structures and give valuable information on the, on the lenses, vitreous retina, and the choroid, as well as the sclera. Uh, this is a picture of B-scan ultrasound. This is the retinal detachment, as you can see there. And there is a traction on the vitreous when the liquefaction starts to happen in the vitreous. It will attra uh, uh, attract the uh, retina and causes a vitreoretinal traction. And this is the retina because of the traction. Case two is the vit uh, vitreous hemorrhage. As you can see the shadows here. This shadow is because of the opti optic nerve. And this is a vitreous hemorrhage. Case two uh, is a 20-year-old male patient presented with the right eye pain and severely decreased visual acuity three days after clear lens extraction surgery done uh, to get rid of glasses was done elsewhere. On exam, uh, he was found to have right eye endophthalmitis. This is a picture of B-scan endophthalmitis. Uh, the eye did not recover well after medical intervention. Uh, being unfortunate, his eye was lost. And because of his young and he's concerned about how he looks, so a prosthetic eye was made for him. And here are some, uh, some of the cases I made in the, our hospital. This case of an old man, he has a post-inoculation uh, socket syndrome. Uh, as you can see here, in the post-inoculation socket syndrome, we can see upper sulcus deformities, upper eyelid malposition, lower lid sagging, um, and many other uh, signs. Uh, this is the final prosthetic eye that, that was made, and we are still following up with him to get the right uh, prosthetic eye. This is a closer look to the prosthetic eye that I make. And this is another patient. She had inoculation in her right eye because of uh, retinoblastoma, a cancer in the eye. And this is a prosthetic eye that I could manage to do. This is a closer look to the prosthetic eye that I made. And this is another patient with a trauma uh, in his right eye. Uh, the eye was uh, uh, thetic eye and no sensation in the cornea. Uh, this is the final um, touch. And this is another patient, the left eye, with the, he had a trauma in his left eye. So this is the last, he was happy. <laughs> Closer look to the prosthetic eyes. This one was uh, with Arca senilis for old female patients. Um, and this is uh, the last one I, I made. Uh, in uh, light of this um, evidence, it's interesting clear that Ocular's job is not just an artwork, but it's a life-changing work of art for the patients. Um, thank you. Our picture is from Jordan. Any questions? How far is the difference between the and the CSR? The layer. Uh, retina detachment starts from the RPE layer. The CSR starts in from the photoreceptors. It's a separation from the RPE and the photoreceptor layer. So it's a question about the difference between the cells and the cells that are under the cells. The cells that are under the cells are under the RPE layer, which is the cells.